Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a small project that I've been wanting to do for a couple months now, but I couldn't decide what to cover this with. All right, so let me show you the first one. My friend Cindy Utter was telling me about this lovely book. Well, it's a binder to put in my six inch and you know my six inch stencils, and I love it. It's so organized and it it just works really well. I put the white paper in here so that. You know, I could use the thing on both sides. And I try to put in dirty stencils so you can see what they are. Back here are some Gina Aaron's um, stencils. What else is in here? And then there's some random ones that people have sent me. And then I have some itty bitties in here. I think this one came from um, Laura Gagain. It's, uh, I think it's Chinese symbols. Love it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, what I did not like about it is that how boring it is on the outside because it looks like this when you get it in the mail. I ordered it off of Amazon, nothing to it. So I got crazy, took one of my prints that I made a while ago and photocopied, ran it off, and then covered the front. And then I went kind of nutsoid <laughs> here and here. I was just doing scraps. Trying to figure out how to fill it in without spending any money on anything. Just doodles that I colored in and I I copied them. This is um, just jelly prints. Jeez, I'm at a loss for words today. I only have one cup of coffee. All right, so I have a second book I want to do. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to cover the second book with stuff that I created the other day. So here's my second one. What you see is what you get. I don't know what's in here. Oh, the tiles and all kinds of random. This one's full. That's, I don't know if this was my first one. No, it's not full. Well, it won't take me long to fill it up. That's for darn sure. Anyway, so I'm going to cover it. And if you watch my video from the giant Posca pin episode, this is one of the prints that I made. And I'm going to use, and I spent yesterday going around it with the black pen because I needed just a little more definition. And I'm going to use this to cover the front. And the rest of it, I just don't know. Maybe I'll, it'll come to me. So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about something that's the bane of my existence is my Epson tank printer. Here's the original. There's the copy. If you notice, there's a big O difference <laughs> in the color. Although, in person, this still looks okay. This looks way better. But this is muted. Um, I'm hoping that they're not selling people on, you know, something that does color exact. Because that ain't true. <laughs> Just not true. Alright, so the reason I scan these is... I want to keep the original because if I ever lose files, which I have done, then I can also, I can rescan this and not have to recreate it. Although recreating is fun, but when I'm in a hurry or I need multiple pieces, I don't want to have to try to recreate this twice, three times, four times when a copy is good enough most of the time. Today it is. All right, so that's one I'm going to use. I want to stay with the blue theme. So this is the original. This is the copy. I'm not loving how light the blue is on here and it's blurry. I don't I don't like that but like I said for today it's good enough. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I have a love-hate relationship with my Epson. I would love to be able to afford a laser printer where my my copies are true to color, but I doubt that's going to happen. All right, so let me take the two originals and set those aside. So what I'm going to start with are these two copies. All right, so the first thing that needs to be done is I need to uh, take the paper cutter and cut the white off because, well, maybe I'll do it this way. Yeah, maybe I'll, do, I'll cut it this way. That way I get the full thing this way. There's, no, there's enough overhead. Yeah, that's what I'll do is I'll take the paper cutter and cut this off. And then I will work my way 
around because these, oops, sorry, this does not have right angles. It, they're they're uh, rounded corners. Oh, mercy, I have only had one cup of coffee, so <laughs> these are rounded corners, so I will have to kind of, you know, bend it around the corner. Then I decided for the inside, I will use this because it, and I'll do it this way, I guess. Um, I, I like the, I want to stay with the blue theme. I guess you can't see that either. Wow, Vicki. Um, I want to stay with the blue theme. Not sure if I will lay it this way. I like it better this way. Yeah, I have enough. Okay, so I'm going to cut stuff up and I will fast forward through some of it. I have not picked anything for, like in the other one, I had stuff here. And I had stuff here and on the back portion. I have not decided. I might do something different than what I did with the front. Although, I, I, I don't know yet. We'll, we'll, we'll see. All right, so let me just do the front and get that done. I might just leave this blank. Or not. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Let me cut the paper.
Okay, so <clears throat> I lost my head and cut some off of these, and I forgot these are my originals. I'm going to run off a copy of this one, which was my roll-off paper. I stamped it with a stamp I carved uh, a year or two ago. Then outline the black, when I stamped it, the black ink pen was kind of going bad. So what I did was I just took a smaller Posca pen and colored in where the black um, print was. Then I outlined it with a white Signo pen, which, again, I have a love-hate relationship with. This one, um, I just, when I did the print, the black showed up, but it wasn't black enough. There wasn't enough coverage. So I went over it with the large Posca pen again. Then I just doodled inside the squiggles. It was fun. All right, so this will be my front and back for the back part, the inside and the outside cover for the book. So now I'm going to run off copies of these and recut them. Oy! And um, we'll go from there. All right, so it's taken me about a half an hour to get all this stuff done. I just, re I just scanned these. Well, these are the prints, but I had to scan the originals because I forgot that after I doodled on them, I forgot to scan them. So I had to go through this whole process of scanning all the papers that I doodled from yesterday. And now i got to cut them up. <laughs> I, you know, I never do anything the easy way. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. <laughs> All right, I want to just cut the white off because I don't. Let's see, will that fit? Oh, no. Son of a gun. Okay. Well, at least I can trim that off with this thing. And let's see, let's do some trim in here because I know already this is not going to fit. And it won't do, I won't be able to use the paper cutter on this one either because it's too tall. That's the only problem that I have. Well, I would like for this to be six inches and I would like for it to be longer that it will fit a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper in here instead of me having to cut the ends off and then strategically wonder how I'm going to cut this way. It, that's the only problem I have with this one. All right, let's see now. Um, I think I'd rather look at this all the time than the squiggle lines. So, of course, that's going to cause me problems because it's not going to fit. All right. I don't want to make this harder than what it needs to be. Oh, don't move. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go with the creases. We're gonna go this way first so I can stick the whole thing in. And you know what? I can't do it that way. Because this is the inside. Well, I can because I will just cut it a little bit smaller later. Because it's going to need to be smaller after I wrap this around for the back. So I might as well start cutting on this. Because I know I'm going to have to cut more. And I don't throw away big pieces like this because I may be able to use them in something else. This stuff, sometimes I will throw away. Depends on how, like, like this one, I will throw away. This one, I won't, because I think this one has more of what I like on it than this one does. And this has an awful lot of white. By the time I cut all that off, I'll have next to nothing left. This will be different. All right, so I'll save that. And then the trash. So now I have to do the back of the book first which is the opposite way I did it before. So we'll start here because we have to fold it to the inside. So do I want them to go up and down or do I want them to go sideways? I like the up and down. Okay, so let's mash the paper.
probably need to glue it first. Yep, I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. I did not screw the lid on here very good last time, so it whoop, it bled out the sides and now it's going to be all nasty when it dries. So I'm going to wipe it with my finger. I know that it's, I'm going to have crust to pick off of it later because I screwed up. This time, let us screw the lid on properly. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to need more glue. I can tell already. Either I get too much or I don't have enough. <laughs> Just going to find that happy medium. I wanted to go out today and leave the house. So I haven't been out in three weeks since getting that nasty virus. And I still feel like I have residue sinus issues because of it. But um, I still want to go outside. And amongst people, I mean, I'm not a people lover. I like my solitude and privacy at home. You know, I stay close to home. But... You start to get cabin fever just because you're, you know that you can't leave. <laughs> All right, so there's that. Okay, so let us flip. I think what I want to do is cut this off sooner than I did last time. I don't need all the bulk. And I will keep this piece. Okay, so let's start the sloppy process. I'm gonna go around the bottom here. I'm trying this has thickness, this cart, this um chipboard has thickness on it it's pretty thick so I'm, I'm trying to do it on the the edge of the chipboard so that it glue it stays really well on the edge once I get it done I have to tell you I don't know who turned me on to art glitter glue but bless you and Art Glitter ought to say thank you for as much money as I spend buying their glues. <laughs> I have spent a fortune on Art Glitter glue, and I love the stuff. But it's not the cheapest glue I've ever used. I think that might be Elmer's. And back in the day when Aline's was kind of a budgeting, budgeting? Is that how you say it? Budding brand? I don't know. Um... I did buy a lot of Aleens then. I think I bought every one of their glues and used them all up and ordered more and I did I did love their glue. And I still occasionally use it, but you know, I got lured lured away by Art Glitter and PVA. The tack it over and over is very useful. And they have um extra thick and I do like the one where the lid's upside down where you can sit it upside down and you don't have to constantly squeeze all your glues right there in the end. Now that comes with some hazards <laughs> but I do I, I do love the upside down lid concept. I think that was fabulous. Whoever came up with that did a good job. Okay so let us start with the trimming I'm just, there's no particular rhyme or reason to what I'm doing. I just don't like the bulk in the corners because it's harder to glue that way. Then I'm going to fold. And I need to glue. And glue. Oops. It makes it easier to go around the rounded corner. If I do little bitty, little bitty turns, 
Let me put glue in there and then mash it down so that it fits the rounded part. And then I'm going to glue here because I'm going to flip it over so I can make, see it's, uh, it's bulky on the corners. If it was a 90 degree angle corner, it would be so much easier, but I don't know why they rounded these corners off. I mean, it, visually it looks pleasing, but it's a bear to, <laughs> it's a bear to glue. I thought about just painting flat out on them, but I ended up not doing it and I don't remember why. I've had these for a few years now and I don't use a lot of stencils, but I just can't bear to part with them in case one day I might have to. This is why we all have craft rooms, art rooms, looking the way we do because what if, you know? <laughs> what if? I think I tore it. No, it's just bulky. So my corners look pretty good. There we go. Now we can do this part. And we need to do it here. And I need to cut a little bit off of the width and the length. It's just a higher. And I'll cut a little bit off the reddish, and no, oh, not the reddish, because that does add a little visual excitement. I'm gonna set these guys aside, see what ended up here. And then I'll round the corners. Oh, look at him. Yeah, loving it. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, let me run a bead down this way for sure. And then I'm going to do a little bit this way so I can start the sticking process. And I'm going to have some glue sticking out already. I see this. Okay. Oh, I forgot to round my corners. Uh-oh. Uh that change it? No, it'll be fine. Okay. You can't see this. I'm so sorry. I get into what I'm doing and I forget that I'm supposed to be like, you know, showing people. <laughs> Okay, I think my end's starting to dry up a tad. Which means I need to find that pen to unstop it. And as much stuff as I have on this desk, as many times as I, oh, there it is, look, look at that. This green pen does not rust with the glue. I bought other things that say they're rust proof and I put it in a glue top and it all turns black, so they lie. Clean that out a little bit. Let's put this pin somewhere where I can find it later. <laughs> because half my half my time in the art room is looking for that stupid little green head pin. I know people put the stoppers, the big stoppers on it with the pin in it and they decorate and all that crap. I really don't have time for that. Come on, drip. Drip, 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 drip. Let me glue this. Go back and do it here. It doesn't have to be heavy. I'm just doing light enough that it'll hold it. I don't want to get out the scraper and scrape it, which means I'll have to pour glue on, then there'll be too much, and then I'll be mad and not to spoon it back in. And see, I tried to avoid the same mistake twice, but it just doesn't happen. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, so there's that. And let's put that pin in there before it dries up anymore. I'm gonna have to go and run this under a hot, hot faucet water and make sure that I get the mess cleaned up on the lid. All right, so here's my, 
here's my creation. Oh, I do love this. Maybe I should have done the whole book in that. I don't know. Then the blue inside. Then my green doodle leaves. And then my squiggle lines. I just, I had some thoughts today about trademarks. Um, I try to use as much of my own art that is absolutely possible. So when I do a video or want to sell something, I don't have to ask anyone's permission and get denied. Um, I, I would like to use other people's art, but I can't say it's mine. When I say I created this, well, maybe created the book, but I did not create the pattern the book was covered in sort of thing. Let me give you exhibit A. Have I got it here? Oh, here it is. Exhibit A. Nope, I don't have them here either. Where'd they go? Well, stinkers. I thought I had them. Anyway. Oh, here they are. If I would just look a little harder, it would be better. There we go. All right, so let me let me do exhibit A. My niece sent me the um, KendraNorton.com book off of Amazon. She did the watercolor. I did the doodles. Now, whose intellectual property is this? This is my original artwork on top of her watercolors, which is her original artwork. I can't use any of this. I mean, I, I can photocopy and use it all I like for me, but I can't use this anywhere because it's trademarked. I did send her a note of which I have not heard a peep out of her. I want to know what once I doodle over it is the trademark done? Um, will I be kicked off at Etsy if they think I've violated a trademark issue? Copyright issue? I don't know. I mean, I'm not sure I understand how this works. I'm working on another These are all photocopies, but I can't use them anywhere except for me, and that's fine. But I would like to cover books with them, like especially this one. I'd like to cover um, some books with it and sell it on Etsy, but I can't because I'm not sure what part of this is copyrighted, and I don't want to take any chances of getting boot booted off or get struck for copyright when it's not that I was trying to violate or trademark or copyright, I'm just not sure where the line is for either one of us. Does her copyright stop where the book's published and mine begin where I doodle over it? I don't know. If anybody has any thoughts on this, please leave comments below because I am very confused. I, like I said, I did send her a note and say, if I doodle over your work, and photocopy it to use to cover books with, am I violating your copyright or trademark issue? Please let me know. I've heard nothing, not a word. And I did it in her message box on Instagram so that maybe there was less noise there than there would be if I had sent her an email. So here I sit with these things that are done that I'd love to be using right now to sell on Etsy because they're my doodles, but it's her watercolor. So, anyway. All right, so that's why I did this and this, which is my artwork on my stuff. I think it's something really important to think about is where does one person's right end and another person's rights begin pertaining to art? I just don't know what, where that line is. I know that if I push it and don't ask permission and get granted permission, Etsy will kick me off of Etsy. And then some attorney will send me a cease and desist letter and then it'll get just ugly. So I'm trying to figure out where that line is. She's on here, I'm on here, and what separates us? Permission? Permission. I hope. I hope it's that simple. 
All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.